We are privileged to host this morning the former governor of Kiambu County, the Honorable William Kabogo. Good morning, William. Morning. How are you doing? Very well. Good to have you here. On nice this to be here after a long time. Uh huh. Mm. You're looking like Kibaki. Ah, they say so. <laughs> <laughs> William so. Kibaki. Oh, Kibaki looks like me. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, Kibaki looks like you. No, there's team. only one way it can go, this one. Sure. You are looking like the late Mwai Kibaki. And you can see how. Yeah, I don't talk to him. Talk, talk like him. Apo mzike pole pole. He was a great man. Mm. Indeed he was. Actually, I was going through some of my old photos and I saw a photo of uh, uh, Kibaki and I. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I just tweeted, I miss Kebaki. Mm. Kebaki's times were easy. Mm. He had God's favor. May he rest in peace. Indeed. Kenya misses Kebaki. We all do. I Welcome. think he's the greatest president we have ever had, according to me. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's my vote. Many will agree with you. Hmm? City has the day's proverb. This week's proverbs are from Zanzibar. Yes, Unguja, not Ugunja, mm -hmm. where Pio and I comes from. Mm -hmm. This is Zanzibar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, one must lay credit where credit is due, isn't it? Yes. yes. Swahili is one of the three main languages of Zanzibar. So, mm -hmm. at least the first three proverbs of the week will be in Kiswahili, then we'll try and translate them into the English language. Yeah. Heri kufa macho kuliko moyo. Heri kufa macho kuliko moyo. Mm. Mr. Kabogo? Uh, you better lose vision, mm -hmm. uh, but not life. That's the way I look at it. Let's put it well. Mm -hmm. You know, this is a man mm -hmm. who lived many years in Mombasa. Mm -hmm. So his knowledge of the Kiswahili language belies his heritage. Mm -hmm. So I don't think he's going to mix his L's and R's. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. What's the deeper meaning of this proverb? Uh, well, it depends on uh, what side you look at it. Mm. Uh, but it literally means uh, you'd rather not see but you're alive. When mm. uh, they say funga la kojito, you 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 say what uh, where I'm getting at. Mm. So some, sometimes it's good to understand that life is not only vision, not what you see, mm. and you understand that uh, most people who are visually impaired, who do not see, who are challenged uh, that way. Mm. Their other senses are triple or double what yours are. Yeah. Mm. Um, so I take it literally that that's what it means. Okay. Um, for, for lack of a better expression. No, you've done it well. A lot's happening in the country, William. You know, in terms of the economy, uh, people's psyche, everything. And all that also is happening in Kiambu. There is a lot of conversation in Kiambu. We'll come to Kiambu. Let's uh, start nationally. What's As a matter of fact, I never discuss Kiambu. Because uh, every time you want to open your mouth and say anything about Kiambu, they say, oh, g tread lover, oh, this <laughs> so guy has failed, oh, this guy. You know, you know all these things. And, You're one of the one million voters I am not a politician, and I say this many mm. times. I'm not a politician. Mm. Politicians have that behavior. And unfortunately, we have very many of them in Kenya. Mm. I'm a leader. Mm -hmm. And once I'm done with elections, if I'm not in office, I'm done with it. Um there are better things to do mm. other than just being in politics. Um, as I said here before, and I'll continue saying, politicians think about the next general election. You can see the mood now. They're already talking 27. We're hardly one year mm. after elections. But leaders think about the next generation. And by the way things are going here in this country today, there's a lot to worry about. Because it looks like it's just elections and elections and elections. Promises and promises and promises. Um, as I was driving here, um, because I started, uh, I was on my way, mm -hmm. then I turned around because it was supposed to be nine. So I was very much on radio. Mm -hmm. 
And at some point I heard His Excellency the President say, we shall deliver on our promises. We are working on our manifesto and we're implementing our manifesto. Here and there, it will, they can continue making noise, but at some point they will congratulate us. Um, that may be so, or the intentions are good. But whether that will happen or not is a big question. Um, I would rather action than words. Mm. We just see things are happening. Mm. Uh, cost of living is coming down. That means cost of fuel comes down. Easy access to opportunities for all Kenyans. Uh, Kenyans earning uh, meaningful uh, life in terms of wage. Because with all the increase in prices, cost of living, and the Kenyan worker still earns the same. Um, that's why you hear every 10 minutes a Kenyan loses a phone. I heard on, uh, I think it was case this morning, and mm. they're saying every 10 minutes a Kenyan loses a phone. And my calculation is there are 12 busy hours in a day. So 12 by 60, 720, right? Mm -hmm. So 720 by 10, 72 phones every 10 minutes. That means that there is a problem in this country. And Kupigwa get a order of the day now. Mm. I was asking one of my colleagues to come to work on uh, Sunday night. We had an issue that required uh, an electrical engineer. And he lives in Gedorai. Mm. So I said, uh, Nicholas, why don't you find your way into our site? He says, boss, hapa satatu, uwezi toka inje. I said, but you must come to work. No, boss, he, hai mm. It's not possible. Unless when you me a gari dinga, it could to back up my oh, doorstep. No. I will not leave my house. Mm. So I imagine that uh, that is how it is in the whole country. Uh, like in, as they say, what you are seeing is a kifua. They want to force us to believe that everything is that okay. Everything is okay. Yeah, and it's not. Well, and saying, you know it's not mm -hmm. okay. You're saying you'd rather see action than hear words. Are you yes. saying you're not seeing action? I'm saying. Um, just now, I got into a gas station mm. by Westlands to fuel. Normally, I'd fuel 8,000 shillings, and my car shows above half. 8,000 just now went to a quarter. <laughs> 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 so, if, if you're telling me that, if you're telling me that uh, uh, I see action, I would have loved to see my gauge go towards half, uh. meaning uh, what I would have done with 8,000 a year ago, mm. I would need 16,000 today. Yeah. Mm. Or that you can only do half of that. That's it. Yeah. And, and, and uh, we have to tighten our belts when things get thick. So I would have to really decide where do I go? Must I go? Because if you avoid going, means you avoid spending. Mm. But some of us are such that you must be everywhere at every one time. So things are hard for Kenyans. Let's just be honest. So what, what, um, what action are you looking for that you're not seeing? Of course, yes, you can see the price uh, of fuel that is going is up. One geared towards making life bearable for Kenyans. Um, because what you see is uh, one has run to central Kenya to try and put Kenyans together. Mm. It, these tribal groupings will never help this country. And I'm referring to the meetings that uh, the Deputy President has been holding in Central Kenya the last few weeks. Mm. We are done with elections. Uh, it is unfortunate that one may think they have no base because they, in, in Kenyan politics, you, 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 you probably require to have a base. Like when you talk about Raila, you say he has his base in Kibra, he has his base in Luwunyanza, he has his base in Nairobi Eastlands. But again, elections. When are we ever? When are we going to stop talking about elections? Mm. Uh, so we are now thinking 2027. Who will be with who? Where to do what? Just to get seats, power, power, money, power, money. That's the cycle. Mm. But that's you who's seeing that, William, because 
on one hand you may be a leader but also on the other hand you've played the political game so you are seeing the political side of things are you saying if you tell that me minus the political that if, side of things there's nothing if, else if, that you see happening if i run back the clock 2002 i would never participate in politics in this country if i was given a new life in 2002 what i know today i would rather just be a businessman and be a businessman and a serious businessman not only in kenya why um right now uh if you are to import anything that has steel, you will pay three times what you paid last year. Mm. You know, cost of uh, uh, developing homes, what I do, um, has become so much. And, and, and why? People don't want to see through the lenses. They just, see, uh, they just feel like, you know, government is just pushing prices up. No, there must be some peculiar interests that are being served. Is it for the general good of the country or is it for the good of a few? You, you understand what I'm trying mm -hmm. to say? Mm -hmm. But I don't want to step on people's shoes, but it is painful to do business now in this country. I've been looking to uh, diversify a little bit towards South Africa. And the only question that you worry about in South Africa is uh, xenophobia. Mm. But otherwise, uh, business is, uh, environment is conducive out there. So I'm saying in a Kenyan situation, we need to ask our leaders to tone down the politics and probably try and worry about the feeling of the general public in terms of survival. Everyone is on a survival mode right mm. now. William, I want to ask you a question. Yes. What you now know, mm. there are people who are, who are going into politics headlong and they think that is a serious career path. What is it that you now know that makes you reflect back? That one, our politics is not about Kenya. Mm. It's about personal interest and how you can get rich quickly. That's it. That's it. That's what our politics is all about. I was reading yesterday that someone has bought a villa in, in Dubai for 270 million. Kenya shillings. Kenya shillings. Lovely. And from, you know, when you read between the lines, it looked like this guy was zero or this she. Is it a he or she? Nowadays, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> they, let's say they were zero. They were <laughs> zero, yes. Mm. But you've managed to buy a flat in Dubai for $270 million. Where, the hell, why, why would you find that kind of money? What is this that you have learned at the age of 54? that you could not have done the last 54 years, but you've acquired some serious acumen, business acumen, to be able to make that kind of money. Well, you say it, one hears of people who before the previous election required soft loans from friends to simply get along and do what other people do by working. Without mentioning names. Mm. I cannot possibly I mention given, names. I have given mm. soft loans. Um, 2012, a million shillings to someone. That someone today <laughs> clearly has more money than you. Uh, not only than me, mm. than anybody else. <laughs> 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 but you know, that's a story. That's a story of another. That's a story of another day. You know, when I talk to people from Kiambu, and I have many friends from Kiambu, I look at the time when you're governor and some of the people who had some of the most vile things to say about you. Same people whom I've spoken to since. Yes. And I have been pleasantly surprised. Well, part of the reason is because I've told them that you're known to me and I've known yes. you for a long time. Yes. And said, you know, the, that man set up systems. We knew who did what. We, we, there were structures. We, we, That's it. The, it Kembo was organized. Yes. I said it was. So then what happened? Uh, the reason I was given was, you know how politics is. I said, no, mm, I don't. Mm. Explain to me, how is yes. politics? Mm. Because you're saying this now. Was it not visible then? Mm -hmm. Why am I saying this? To make you feel a little good about yourself. But also, to the question I asked initially, you see, this idea of people wanting to make as much money as they can for themselves. Right. 
there is a provision here that a provision rather that I have to consider. They seem to think that the way they go about it is a free fall and they'll never be held accountable. So sure. that is why they seem to head in that direction in droves. Now I am of the view that the day of reckoning is not far. That is my view. Something happens in this country um, because one, uh, I, I avoid talking Kambu, but uh, at the risk of uh, looking uh, like a jitter, jilted lover. Which you are not. To, to make a country grow, things need to happen. Mm. Systems need to be in place. Mm. And government will always change. Mm. I want to tell my friend, William Ruto, a day will come he will not be president. Mm. A day came Kenyatta is not president. But he, he, mm. Yes, he's not president anymore. A day anymore. came Kenyatta yes. one died, and that's the one person, yes. those of us who are young, one didn't envision Kenya being without Kenyatta. That's it. It happened. So, power is transient. Mm. If we want to grow our country, we must be serious about what we do. And we must be moved by... Uh, we must be moved by the need of making Kenya work. Hmm. But as I said earlier, from those that we elect, and I was listening to PL, PLO uh, giving a talk somewhere in Ghana about uh, saying that we are our own problems because we elect people who cannot help us, people who cannot lead us to where we should be. Hmm. I did systems, yes, as you say in Campbell. Mm. Everything was working perfectly okay. And number one was to eliminate handling of cash. Yes. We needed systems, money to be paid in, in a system, not in people's pockets. That is the context because they talked about the amount of revenue Kiambu used to raise yes. in your time. We moved the revenues from 700 million a year to 2.8 billion. Not by adding any uh, taxes, mm. by making sure that theft is reduced to almost zero. Mm. If I had done a second term, probably Kemba would have been the first self-sufficient or self-funding country in the Republic. And it is possible to happen. When I went in, we found that a bottle of water, 300 ml, mm. Mm. the County was buying at 300 shillings. <laughs> Three times the price of fuel then. Water. Sugar, I think 400 shillings. Doom, I don't know for what purpose. You know all these things. Mm. And when I saw that, I said, oh my God, how can this be? What did I do? I stopped entire purchasing. I stopped it. I said, for 14 days, we are buying nothing. I send people out, go to Nakumat, go to Quickmart, go to all the supermarkets, get me a price list of all these things and find a mean price for everything. I convened a cabinet quickly and we said we are not purchasing anymore the way we do. We must purchase from these supermarkets and the highest price we pay is the mean that we have found among supermarkets. Because if Nakumat sells water at 40 bob, it means they're making some money. Mm. Mm -hmm. So why should we pay more than 40 bob? So what happens? Everyone disappeared. All the suppliers. They all disappeared because they were no, no longer going to make the kill. And there is where we started. Where are the quick fruits? What can we reap quickly? By sh stopping CFOs from going to a bank to collect 10 million shillings for impressed. Do you think the same can be graduated to a national level? It can be, yes. Because is that what we're talking it about? It is now? the because will, but mm. when you, who, who, in whose interest? Mm. This is how you look at it. If you stop an, a, a CFO from collecting 10, 20 million shillings cash from National Bank, you have stopped people from receiving cash. Mm. Yes. And these people are in those offices to make cash not to make Kenya a better place. And this is the problem of our politics.
As we take a break, William, did you, at the end of the first term of the county government of Kiambu, were there pending bills? Oh, uh, I think we had pending bills of about 180 million, and that was uh, bills that were spreading, uh, projects that were spreading, or programs that were spreading between one and three years. Mm. Uh, it's always possible to have pending bills, but not excessive pending bills. Mm. Why would you have pending bills of nine billion in Kambu County when your annual revenues from Exchequer is about seven billion? What is the uh, um, logic? How do you incur money that you don't have? Government does not spend money it doesn't have. Yeah. Government does not have borrowings that they do in uh, reserve banks to make programs happen. Mm. You budget what you anticipate to receive. Mm. So unless you tell me you are budgeting for seven billion and you got six, so you have a deficit of one billion to cover. It's just pure theft. You know, I understand that for a governor to collect money from potential contractors is easy. Mm -hmm. Float a tender. Mm -hmm. Tell your friends you will give you this, yeah. but you need to cough 10%. Mm -hmm. So he pays 10% or 20% or whatever it is, that becomes a bill in the future. Because if that contract is not given or awarded to this fellow, then he knows that he needs to shout to to the governor yes, or yes, to yeah. whoever it is. Mm. So you will find very many ghost projects that will never take off. Even these spending bills, are they real bills? They cannot be real. That has been the question. Where was the uh, uh, control of budget? Mm. Every year, uh, you do a prop, uh, uh, your paper in terms of preparations of budget. Mm. These things goes to uh, the control of budget. How do they never see these things? Inchi ya kitu kidogo. Wizi. This is our problem. 28 minutes to 9. Kenya's biggest conversation hosting William Kabogo. What do we call you now? So, former governor. Kabogo, okay. William, simple. Yeah, yes. former governor, okay. Now a farmer yeah. for the time. Farmer being. now, okay. Developer. Developer, yes. okay. Uh, what uh, else? And you know, I, I, I've, I've, I've seen things happen in this country from 2002. It's, it's over 20 years of experience in mm. terms of leadership, <laughs> uh, politics, etc. Experienced observer of the goings on in the country. Right, right okay. now, there's a good project that the government is pl trying to Tell do. Tell us about it after the break. Yes. Let's do this break. We'll be back shortly. Good morning. Spice. Things you mentioned that really sticking in my head here, and maybe you talk about the fact that, you know, Kenyans politicians, Kenya's politicians are not for are not there for the people of Kenya, that really it is for individuals here. And then we kind of see this whereby when we look at development, when we look at, you know, the implementation of certain policy to make life better for Kenya citizens, mm -hmm. that doesn't really seem to take off as often as or let's as, as much start. for us as we'd like let, to. Let's. So if we know, and I've said it often, right. um, that uh, leaders will often show, they show you what they mean. You don't have to go beyond a word. Let's let's imagine that leaders, uh, to start with, mm. are MPs. Let's start there. Mm -hmm. Okay. You are elected to go and represent your constituents. Right? Yep. It's not a secret that Kenyans are crying of cost of living. Mm -hmm. It's not a secret. And I'm sure even yourselves have felt the changes in your pockets in mm. terms of expenditure. It's what profound. You Mm. Uh, and 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 uh, what you need to do to get uh, from point A to point B, mm. but as this happens, what have you heard our MPs saying? Which one have you had talking about the problems their constituents are facing? Mm, unfortunately, none. What they tell you is that uh, this is a global problem, mm. and so suffer quietly. Because it's a, it's, it's a global problem. I have seen today, it's like some of us may be happy that uh, uh, Israel and uh, Hamas is happening. Because now they have said in, in today's paper, if you look, they're saying, uh, it will get even worse now mm. with uh, Hamas and Israel. Mm. The effect of that war yes. on our country. It, it may have an effect. I'm not saying it will not. But that is not the cause of our problems. No, it isn't. No, it's not. 
Um, the president as a man may have good intentions, but uh, all these people around him, what's their business? Do they do what is expected of them by Kenyans? And why I expect, hmm. I expect uh, every other advisor around President uh, William Ruto to tell him plain truth of what is happening. But when I listen to David and D, I'm like, good God. You're not telling us that, uh, you know, we, were lis we listened to these pledges. And then he says mockingly, and you believed. Mm. You know, quote, and mm. you believed. Mm. And the guy is still in office. As a leader, at the point where you were in office, because I often wonder that, you know, there is the individual who speaks to Kenyans atop vehicles or wherever it is and says, I am going to do one, two, three. Just give me an opportunity. I mean, you've done it. Give me an opportunity to lead you. And so we can, you know, we can speculate about what goes on in your head at that point. Now, let's move to when you are actually in the position. Do you expect Kenyans to hold you accountable for the things that you said that you were going to do or for this position where you speak of where you would expect that the very rights, uh, uh, the very expectations of Kenyans will be the things that you do every day? Do you expect that Kenyans will hold you accountable? Because I often think the reason I why... I expect they should. They should. Yes. I often think that the reason why we see this kind of behavior is that People in those positions will assume that Kenyans will not ask them about their goings on. So but also just they're asking to... Kenyan, what is the what is in the mind of the asking Kenyan? We've made our politics such that if I go to the village and I can afford to dish five hundred bob to everyone who comes around, mm. then I don't need to be held, held accountable. Uh, held accountable. Mm. My accountability is how much money I can dish in how long a time. And, and this, if it doesn't change, this is the culture that we are developing and it will never change. Africa will never grow if this is the attitude of our voter. Surely, at the risk of <laughs> when you have a a governor in Nairobi who is elected on a popular vote, very popular vote, but has never run anything, has never run any office, has no clue what the governorship is all about, what is expected of you, where you derive your powers from. Right now, if you look at all the 47 counties, I'm sure governors believe that they are the apex authority. Hmm. But the apex authority in a county is not the governor. It is that body, that committee, comprised of 10, including the governor and the deputy governor. How many convene those meetings? How many get to a table and they tell the governor, no, we cannot go this way as a county. Mm. How many? It is how much money the governor will move, how much money he will give to who. And, and this is a culture that I'm talking about in this country. It is painful to see these things happening. And it is possible to develop this country. It is possible. It can be done. So why doesn't it happen? Because William, you know the things that you've said today, mm. you know the difference between a politician and a leader, somebody who is not in this for themselves, somebody who is in this to benefit the people, his people, her people. If you listen to many of our politicians, many of our elected leaders, one-on-one, -on -one, they will speak the same language. Yeah, they will speak, but do they, they will do? hear them do speak they do? the same do language. They do? do they act? And that's the thing I'm asking. They speak, they act differently from what they speak. What is it that makes them act differently from what they you speak? You want to be a populist to start with. You want to be elected next term. So they are driven by next term, next election. Mm -hmm. That if I didn't give a damn is if I was going to get the second term. Mm. I didn't give a damn. I did what I had to do. I made difficult decisions. 
I probably lost my uh, seat because I was a threat to many. Not because I didn't do what I was expected to do in Campbell. Till today, you've had the issue of healthcare in Campbell. The best. Till today. If systems were put in place and they worked, that if I would have allowed my son to go to hospital in Campbell Hospital. If he had come to see me someplace in Campbell and he got into a small accident and he needed Medicare, he would have gone to Campbell and I would have been happy that he will be fine. Mm -hmm. Is it the situation today? You remember I kept complaining to Kidero. Make your hospitals. Put medicine in the dispensaries. We are treating Nairobi people more than we are treating Campbell. Mm -hmm. well, Machakos, mm -hmm. they bought, I don't know, 20 ambulances mm -hmm. not to take people to their hospitals, to bring them to Thika and other places. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So these guys, you know, it gets to a point you think you're in the wrong country. It gets to a point and you feel like you just want to move. Uh, Would you say the William? cost of doing business here mm. now, mm. as a businessman now I speak, not as a politician, mm. is becoming so difficult to make ends meet genuinely as a businessman here. And if you go down south in South Africa, regardless of the xenophobia and things like that, because I've been there, you can be, uh, you can start a business in South Africa in, in four weeks and you're up and running. Up and running. What's we are mean? now importing from South Africa than importing from Europe because, one, the dollar. I want you to ask yourself, mm. if this problem of the dollar is global, as we are told, why hasn't it affected Tanzania? Why is there money supply, U.S. dollar supply in Tanzania, in Uganda? Why is it that the shilling and the rand are still at 7.6? What is happening here with the dollar that we do not know? What is it? You tell me, I don't it's know. It's being hoarded. It's not complicated. The inflow of dollars is still the same. Kenyans abroad, or diaspora, as you call them, yeah. are still sending money home, right? Yes, they are. But there is a shortage to pay school fees last week. I could not send money uh, to school in one go. I needed to wait two, three, four days to collect 2,700 pounds, 2,300 pounds, you know, 2,000 per day. This has never been the case. Is so there shortage? is no supply. There is lack of dollars in the market. Is but there is still inflows. No, meaning not. money is not flowing out. Hmm. So where is the money? It's being hoarded. For how if, long? If it's wow. hoarded, if it's hoarded, it can't circulate. The way money works, it has to circulate. If it's not circulating, and we know it came in, so where is it? So the law of demand and supply kicks in. So there is too many of us chasing the dollar. Mm. So the dollar becomes expensive. So somebody has made sure that there's a shortage because then you benefit. When there's a shortage, the Kenyan shilling does what it does. You see, the shortages can be caused. There's a question I want to ask William before we get to this dollar situation. And the dollar situation is a good one to uh, dovetail from. There are those who philosophize and think about human nature and they say that if you want to know the true nature of someone give them a position of authority yes would you say that the positions of authority that our political leaders have give us a very clear picture of who these people actually are uh <laughs> the, let me let me just give you another example. <laughs> they say when you find a drinking person, yes. man or he or she, mm. they drink and get high. Mm. What they do and say mm. is who they are. In yep. Vino Veritas. Mm. That's they say, who they in are. In wine there is truth. Mm. Mm. So yes. give a man power. Mm. Give a man money. Mm. And he will show exactly what he is. So it you, is that that's you, it. you do not need to 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 think overthink analyze you can see no, no. same monkeys same forests but you expect different results amazing 
So then are we saying that that's who we are as Kenyans? Because generally, we keep, we generally, keep trying yes. different Ge- leaders. Generally, yes. We remove one leader, you bring in another one, and you're still in the same pit. You bring in other leaders at national level, at county level, you still find ourselves in the same Someone pit. told me a very painful thing to mm. listen to, even to Phantom, that sometimes you need a benevolent dictator mm. to move from where we are to the next level. And I, I'm not calling Paul Kagame a, a dictator, mm. but that is a good example of a country that has grown. You know this concept of... 1994, mm. Rwanda was zero. Mm. It was actually below zero. Today, Rwanda is on top in mm. terms of growth of nations in, 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 in yep. the world. Mm. Not in Africa, in the world. We tend to think... Uh, Solution to our problems is democracy. Then <laughs> democracy has not worked. If it's not working in America, yeah. uh, will it work here? I, I'm not saying that make me a dictator and I'll sort Kenya. If I were, if I were, that if I am telling you the truth, sort I'll Kenya. fix it. Mm. I will fix it. Like now, the president has a very good idea about giving us homes. Mm. Yeah. It's important because shelter is one of the things we fought for. And it's a fundamental right, really. Mm. But how this project will be implemented, in my mind, mm. is still a very big question. When you start a fund, you should be able to make regulations about the fund. How will it be administered? Yeah. Okay, to be collected. 3% or whatever it is of your basic pay up to a maximum of so much. That is easy. Mm-hmm. How will you identify where the project will be done? How will you identify the contractor? What will happen if you project seven years? What will happen to those who will have contributed in those seven years mm-hmm. but have only contributed 20, 30,000 shillings over seven, seven years. years. So how would you relate that house to the contributor? You, you understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. The idea is great. To, you know, Rwanda went the same road. And every other young person under the age of, I think, 41 or 39, mm. then got a mortgage facility from government. And they now own homes because it's 20 years later. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. How many Kenyans will own homes? And I'm talking about the lower cadre of society. Mm. I'm not talking about the Latifs, Kaboko and and, and others. I'm talking about Mamamboga. How will she get a flat of two and a half million shillings after seven years? Is it going to be possible? Big question. So and, the, and, and the president can come up with a good idea, mm. but it must be a support system. S- it it must be discussed it. and turned upside down like Ugali mm. to make sure that you have left no stone unturned in terms of how it shall be implemented mm. Mm. and the effect of this project 10 years from now. At the risk of sounding negative, government has no business building homes. Government has no business building homes. The so, idea is great. So what did you But rather? leave the building of homes to the private industry. How can it work? I've, said, William, it, I've said it before. That's let, me how try, it's let me try and explain. Mm-hmm. How would I do it? Government makes policies. For example, government finances banks. Yeah. I mean, regulates banks. Licenses banks. Licenses banks. What would be the effect of government making a policy today and saying, Equity Bank, Barclays Bank, APSA Bank, in your regulations, we want to say 5% of your portfolio mm-hmm. must go to Real mortgage. Mm-hmm. And we want to go further and say 5%, uh, I mean, 
five percent of your mo of of your portfolio, say equity has a portfolio of one trillion, five percent must go to mortgage at an interest rate of five percent. Why are we dictating the interest rate to make sure that the Kenyan prospective homeowner gets mortgage at five percent? So what happens to the other bit? Because the bank is a commercial bank. Mm -hmm. I would propose to state to allow those banks to represent the difference 5% and allow it as an expenditure for income tax purposes. That will allow tax to be spent at source. But to a Kenyan, to own a home, then Kaboko the builder, you the developer, we will make homes and banks will give money to Kenyans. To purchase the homes. To purchase homes at 5%. And that bank, in its annual returns to government, it shall produce 5% that it should have earned on that loan and I'll be allowed for income tax purposes. Sorted mm. to Jenke Taifa, Pamoja. But when you leave it to the state to collect money in form of taxes or contributions and then send 9 to 20 billion a month. Mm to these programs mm. without you having checked on a spreadsheet what's going to happen seven, eight years from now. Mm. A good idea will have gone waste and so much money. Would have been lost. Probably have white elephant programs. Why? What happened to the housing project in Kibra? Let's start there. Mm. What happened to Kibra? Those guys got allocations. Yeah. They took the houses. And the following month, they went back to Kibra and sold, sold the houses. Mm -hmm. uh, the, those opportunities to uh, Latif and to Kabogo and to others. So the idea is brilliantly good. It's why a good then, idea. Why then do you think, Kabogo, that this is not being implemented? Because we've asked that question. I mean, um, the conversation... The president has come up with a good idea. He needs people to support him by ideas and telling him, if we go this way, we will But the fail. issue of of regulations was also at the president's table. I mean, it's, it's something that even he has said. We will start, but mm. within a short time, we'll have regulations. There's something that this government is very keen on doing or very fond of doing. Started, um, uh, the, the, what's it called? Hustler, 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 Hustler Fund. Fund with regulations, but not implementation of the regulations. The Housing Fund without regulations. We have now gone into this a new health program without regulations. Why... Why do you think they're keen on implementing program and then uh, regulations you're, you're, will catch up not, later? And all these programs not. have in it inbuilt a Levy. money. Yes, I was going to be more polite. I was going to say mm. a money collecting scheme. Mm. All of it. That, that's what I'm saying. Uh, teamwork. Teamwork. The president cannot do everything by himself. That is why the David D's are uh, supposed uh, to be there. Excuse me. <laughs> we had a member of parliament here on Friday. He sits in the health committee. Yes. And he was talking about, and even other MPs have told us, when it came to these four bills yes. for UHC, mm. the president would personally follow up on what's happening in parliament through his ministers, but also directly. Where are my bills? Are my bills moving? If there's anything that's locking those bills, can we have those conversations? Can you discuss? Can you agree? But can we have the bills? So, so, have, so that by the have, 20th of October, I yes. can launch mm, UHC. UHC. So the same so, way, so, the president knows that those bills need to come alive with regulations. He was talking about it yesterday. He was saying, now we have the bills. Now by, the, by December, we'll have the regulations. Why do we have to wait until you December know the for bill, regulations? The bill, Latif, the bill is the what? How about the how? How will it be done? Yes. When is that discussed? Hmm. And that is the disconnect. I'm saying brilliant things. Shouldn't the how be discussed before all this? That's part of it. Yes. So that... You, you know the what is... The what we've got. The, ho the what we got it right. Mm. The, the, the housing we need. Mm. Mm. Kenyans want housing. Got that. Yes. But the how should have been the major debate. How will this transcend from current 10 years of William Ruto's presidency to the next 50 years for Kenyans owning homes, long after we're gone. And that's why I'm harping on that point. The how is also as clear to William Kabogo as it is clear to William Ruto. Regulations and all. We're into how many months of the housing fund? 
and we still don't have regulations <laughs> in place and for managing mm. the housing fund that's collecting billions every month, month. and new projects being launched yesterday you, he spoke about launching a, a new look, project did you in the great south did you have a look at the presentation by was it hinga yes yeah. who did uh hinga actually came here a number of he times he did some uh remember when he was really sweating mm. yes why was he sweating so bad it was a warm day <laughs> it's a fact it a day of the matter that he is not too sure about what he's saying that's the and I, I, and and I, i'm saying this from the bottom of my heart that the housing project is is a Brilliant. Deal, is, is a but won't start. Let's let's do the news first. It's 9 a.m. William Kabogo is our guest. Good morning. This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day.